Uh, since their installation here in Chicago, the Chicago windows have been a destination for so many people coming. We've heard since we removed them for conservation reasons every day that people have missed their being in the Art Institute. So their return is a glorious homecoming for these great windows. The reasons for this popularity are, I think, twofold. First is the public's love of the artist's work. With his signature graceful forms floating in expanses of rich color, Chagall has appealed always to a wide audience. Stained glass was the perfect medium for Chagall, who from his earliest work, as in the painting Birth, was interested in exploring the expressive effects of color. The color shapes he creates in this painting indeed recall the leaded zones of color in stained glass. The Chagall windows have actually a very long history in the city of Chicago. We can actually trace sort of the beginning of it all back to 1946 when Chagall had a major retrospective here at the Art Institute. This painting behind me was actually in the show. He came again in 1958 when he was invited by the University of Chicago to do a lecture. Those two events really started a great interest in people in Chicago in Chagall's work. In the late 1960s and early 1970s, Chicago witnessed a great moment of renaissance for public artwork. This was a time when the Picasso now in Daly Plaza was inaugurated and many other works began to be planned. And Eleanor and William Wood Prince approached Chagall about making a work for the city. The result was Four Seasons, which is a monumental mosaic that today is installed in Chicago's Chase Tower Plaza. While he was here, Chagall learned about the Art Institute's expansion and the auxiliary board of the Art Institute's plan to dedicate a gallery to the artist. He was so touched by this that he actually offered to make a set of stained glass windows for this new gallery. And that's the birth of America Windows, that particular moment. It was unveiled with great fanfare at a formal ceremony hosted by the Auxiliary Board of the Art Institute. These windows also commemorate the importance and the memory of Mayor Richard J. Daley, who had recently passed away. As we began to construct the modern wing, there were a number of galleries coincident with the construction of the modern wing that were at some risk because of vibration from construction. One of those galleries was a gallery in which we had the Chagall windows. Removing them from harm's way on that occasion gave us the opportunity to conserve them for the first time. We were very pleased to have an opportunity to study these windows uh, when they were deinstalled a few years ago for the construction of the modern wing. We had not had a chance to look at them when they were installed originally in 1977. They arrived and were instantly installed in place, and we had limited technical information about them. So we needed to learn as much as we could once they arrived in the lab about how they were painted. And it's been an interesting process uh, learning about it. As we began to examine the windows in the lab, we became aware that there was a very hazy gray film over many areas of the window, particularly in areas where the paint was quite rough and textured. When we looked at it closely with analysis, we realized that there's a lot of linseed oil and a lot of calcium carbonate sitting on the surface. We think that these are residues of the caming putty. And over time, this residual oil has just attracted a lot of dirt. The windows have been on display for decades, and we needed to find a way to remove some of this hazy film. Once we were satisfied that the, we understood the technology of the windows, that the paint is in fact well fired to the surface, we looked at a number of cleaning methods um, using solvents and using soaps, and settled on a use of a mild soap and some elbow grease and a little bit of patience, and we were able to remove some of this gray hazy film, most of it. And I think what we've been able to do is allow a little bit more light to pass through the windows, and we're turning them more to the state they were in when Chagall was painting them. In a traditional medieval stained glass, each piece of glass is the same color throughout, with one exception. In medieval red glass, the colorant is so strong that the red looks black. It causes the glass to go opaque. So the medieval artisan learned to create a sandwich of glass. Uh, he took a gather of molten clear glass, colorless glass, dipped it into red glass, and blew his cylinder and flattened it to a sheet of glass, with the result that the glass has a very thin layer of red on the back of it. 
This kind of glass is called flashed glass. Charles Marc, who is the glassmaker who worked with Chagall in the creation of these windows, adapted this technique of flashed glass to really brilliant effect. For Chagall's designs that Marc was executing in stained glass, suddenly the, you don't need extra separating leads. You can have multiple colors in each field. There are several wonderful examples of this use of flashed glass and the acid washing that can render washed effects here. I'd like you to look at an area such as this. This is actually, we think, a piece of yellow glass with a blue flash on the back of it. When you remove parts of the blue flash, what you see is a combination of a very faint residue of blue together with the yellow, giving you a green, a very subtle green color. Chagall's original designs are in watercolor and gouache. And Charles Marc realized that with flashed glass, he could really create a, a, an immense variety of gradations in tone and in color. Charles Marc took these designs and he blew them up to cartoons, which are the full size of the installed windows. He then examined the colors and the rhythms of the design and decided where he would like to divide up the windows. These are called cames, these dividing lines, and it's Charles Marc who decides how the glass can be cut, how it can be safely cut, uh, and how large a piece he can use. Once the design is set, he chooses the colors that best represent Chagall's designs. He has the glass cut to the shapes that he needs and has them leaded up. These canes are, they basically look like an H. They have little channels in them and the edges of the glass fit in tightly into these channels. So you assemble all of your cut glass together. This assembly then went to Chagall's studio where it was painted. The paint is a traditional medieval Grisaille. Grisaille means gray, and it's a mixture of metal oxides with glass flux and an organic binder that temporarily causes the paint to adhere to the glass. He then takes his fingers and he, and he rubs away at areas of the paint and the tip of his paintbrush to create a lot of the zigzag lines that you can see here. In the end, the paint layer is very rough and very vigorous. That's one of the best qualities of it. I think it lends a, a great deal of energy and vibrancy to the painted surface. Then everything is deleaded again, fired to fuse the paint permanently onto the surface, and then everything is reassembled again in its leads, and this time putty is applied, which is the adhesive that basically strengthens the connection between the glass and the lead so that the window operates as a unit. In addition, by bringing them back on view after conservation to specially built galleries for them, we can restore the circumstances in which they were first installed. That is, they were installed with walls coming perpendicular from the windows. They concentrated the glow of light within a defined space. What we see in the America windows is not only moments where we can actually identify the skyline of our city, but we can also see a celebration of this historical moment, the bicentennial, and you'll see um, little icons that relate to the history of the United States, but each of the panels of the windows also commemorates one of the arts, whether it be painting or uh, dance or the theater, um, and all that that represented for Chagall. So it's a wonderful work that brings together a number of different ideas, weaves them together into a very beautiful, very colorful tapestry of, of light and color and glass. Light coming through the America windows liberates color from the glass, bringing it into the room and making viewers feel as if they share in the rich and magical chromatic world that Chagall has created for his figures. We are enveloped in a sea of sumptuous blue. It's a very special experience.